it's gonna be alright. Hello and welcome to the Sus Pod. I'm Alessia, a former member from the Bristol Suspensions, a mixed UK a cappella group from the University of Bristol. And over the next 10 weeks, we will be recording podcasts and releasing podcasts where we interview people from each generation of the group, from the first gen, which is 2014, all the way up to where we are right now, which is the 10th generation, which is so exciting. So in honor of reaching 10 years, a decade of the Bristol Suspensions, on the 3rd of February, we will be having a big show to celebrate called Suspensions. See what I did there? And it will be celebrating our 10 year anniversary. So keep it in your diaries. And over the next couple of weeks, we'll be interviewing somebody from each generation, hearing about their favorite songs, what their experience was like in the group and also of course a little bit of acapella gossip so tune in and without further ado enjoy the episode hi and welcome to the first episode of the sus pod today we are joined by Gemma, who was in the first year of suspensions so how did first of all hello hi how are you doing (laughs) nice to see you lovely to see you so how did you first hear about suspensions and how Mm. did it come to be (gasps) Well, uh, I first heard about suspensions because I was in a little group called Tubbs, the University yes. of Bristol Barbershop Singers. And one of the reasons I picked Bristol as a uni, I mean, a very loose reason, the main reason being the academic one. But, you know, I wanted a life outside of outside of, of my subjects. I a, a lot of things. But one of the things I saw was the Barbershop Society. And I was mm-hmm. like, I love singing harmonies. Give me some harmonies. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so I joined that immediately and I met Joe. Picking, don't pick in. Oh, great, Joe, emerging leader. Um, <laughs> through barbershop, um, and I knew Raf as well through um, like various music things because we were in orchestra and around classical music together. And they had set up a, a singing group, and I might be wrong on this. They'd set up a singing group in Stoke Bishop for all the Stoke Bishop halls oh. that was held in Will's Hall. Some of the rehearsals, and I was kind of like vaguely aware of that. Uh, but then Joe was like, "I'm setting up this group, Gemma." you need to audition for it, please audition. I don't know how many people are gonna turn up. And I said, yeah, yeah, absolutely, that sounds great. Um, And so I auditioned and luckily I got in, which was great. And it kind of went from there. And we did, um, I I mean, I stayed in tubs for the love of barbershop, but very much like was really excited about the suspensions being something quite different. You know, we've got choreo, we've got beatboxes, we've got everything in there that's kind of just a really different, situation to be in and really really fun so we've actually got a little video from joe to kind of give us a little bit of history about suspension and how it first was born because i don't really know the backstory because yeah. i've only joined in the fifth year mm. um so we're gonna go to joe and hear a little bit about his uh we're gonna go to joe hello suspensions podcast i'm joe one of the founders of the group a little bit of a, a story of how the group started and the three founders raf eve and myself uh, we're singing together in a group called Tubs and Hot Tubs, which kind of did mainly barbershop style, close harmony, not too many soloist beatboxes, that kind of thing. And we'd been in this group for a while and we really wanted to do that kind of modern beatboxer led, soloist led a cappella singing. And it wasn't really a big thing at the time. Uh, you know, we'd, we'd listen to groups like Out of the Blue and really like what they were doing. Um, so I messaged them on Facebook. They said, yes, let's do it. And we set up a society called Bristol Acapella Society and held a workshop day where we learned a song in two hours. Some of the, the original members of the group went to that workshop day and we thought this could definitely work. Um, and we came up with the name of the group. We held auditions. We had a stall at Freshers Fair to advertise it. And from there, we went on. I didn't know that it was originally from tubs and I didn't know that that was kind of a lot of the inspiration in the music as well was kind of Mm. inspired by tubs how was that transition from the kind of barbershop group to Mm. acapella yeah I think it was an interesting one for everyone because um and I, I might be wrong people might correct me but I think none of us in the group in year one had done modern acapella before in that format and so it was all new to every one of us and we were all discovering new things all the time which is part of what made it such a nice atmosphere of everyone just being like super excited about these things they were discovering for the first time ever um and everyone having ideas and being like oh my god have we thought of this we've seen a group who do this this is amazing let's try it um and i think that kind of very solid background that joe and eve and raf had in barbershop that like knowing how it works and how it sounds good um, and having that really sturdy background is what made it successful really is that they had that musical knowledge to make it work 
while allowing everyone with their excitement and their ideas to kind of throw them in on top, which made something really like really exciting, but not something that was kind of just a mess of ideas from people who didn't know what they were doing, really. Um, so it was a really nice, a really nice way to start. And so what year was Sus founded in? Because it was recently uh, Suspensions Day at the time of yes. filming. It was recently Suspensions Day. Can you tell us a bit about that? Yeah, it was Suspensions Day. I think it was the 15th of October. Wow. If I remember, was our yeah. first, the anniversary of our first rehearsal. Yeah. I was looking back through my Facebook memories, feeling old. <laughs> <laughs> it's like 10 years ago was our first rehearsal. Like, please, no. As if it's um, been a decade. Yeah, it's wild. 2014 wow. was, I guess, when the auditions were held and we had our first rehearsal. Um, and then everything kicked off. And now here we are. Mm. <laughs> Isn't that absolutely nuts? I can't believe it's been 10 years. What consisted of the year then? Because now obviously mm. it's kind of tradition that we do Bosworth mm. and then we do a Christmas concert and then we do the ICCA competition mm. and then it's usually end of show in Fringe. Yeah. End of your show in Fringe. And so what was the structure then? Because you were literally just starting out. You didn't, like, I don't, what plans did you have yeah. at that time? Yeah, I think it's quite, it's quite nice for the groups now, but I can't imagine it being that way for me with the way the groups now have quite a structure to the yeah. year like you say they've got their highs their lows they sort of once you you join the group you kind of know what your year looks like to an extent there might be some you know decisions to do this or that one year or not the next um but for us we were like I don't know we'll just sing for a while and see what happens <laughs> and I'm sure behind the scenes Joe and Raph and Eve had a plan that we didn't know about but for us mm. just sort of being members of the group we were like, just here for the ride, just for the fun. It was a really exciting time because every time an opportunity came, sort of out of nowhere, we were all like, wow, this so is wild. Bad. Like yeah. we, we were asked to, we were busking down at Harborside and we were like near a BBC pop-up and they just walked over to us and they were like, do you want to be on the radio? And we all just thought that was the craziest thing to ever happen. We thought we were going to be like stars. <laughs> um, now, I mean, groups do it all the time. It's, <laughs> yeah. you know, kind of a, a staple of the calendar to do your little like radio slot on your local radio or like regional. But for us, that was like crazy. And we went into the BBC and we were all just like hugging outside like, guys, look how far <laughs> we've come. I think in the first year, First and second year do become one a little bit for me. But like in the first year, I think we did know about Voice Fest. I think that was in plan. I don't know if all along, um, probably Joe can tell you more about whether that was a plan from the beginning. But I, I know pretty early on, it was like in our sights, we're going to give that a go. And for us, it was just really exciting to send in an audition video. Like yeah. that was the level that we were kind of, again, as members, maybe Joe had higher, higher <laughs> Joe, Raph and Eve had higher plans for us. But as a member, it was like, it's just so exciting to record the video. Oh, they're going to see it. That will be cool. And then we were asked to go and perform. And we were like, that's crazy. <laughs> um, and we had a great time. At that time, the focus was much more on community, bringing people together, doing these amazing workshops with their judges that they had. Um, so, yeah, it was very different. Um, I don't, I think it was 10 groups. Um, so there were still a lot of people there. I mean, groups I can't remember now. I remember Aquapella and Semitone being there because I remember their set that they did. Um, and being like such a fangirl <laughs> and then meeting them being like, oh my God, I've met blah, blah from Semitone. But yeah, it was, it was a really good weekend. We had fun. Uh, we shocked everyone by coming out with Anaconda on our <laughs> first outing in so the world. No one had heard of us and we were like, here's Anaconda guys. <laughs> <laughs> So that was fun. <laughs> yeah, it was our introduction to the world. Yeah, definitely. And I think that the first generation also has, it did a lot for suspensions in kind of setting us in good stead for the rest of the 10 years. Mm -hmm. And also I think it was the birth of a lot of our personality. Mm. We're quite a quirky group. Yeah. We're not like, when it comes to performing, we're not super serious. We do enjoy like a little number, like mm. Anaconda yeah. <laughs> to, to with that out at, at a certain time. And I think that was very much the heart of the group. Yeah, um, And it was really important to us as a group, as a whole, um, that, and I've sort of taken it on as the motto we did in those few years. I don't know if it's stuck on. I think it was that year at Voice Fest that one of the judges said they were fun and good. It summed up what we've been talking about that year, which is like, We've got this great opportunity. It is a competition. Like we want to be good, 
But ultimately, like, if it stops us from being fun and having fun, then we don't want to be good. I'm glad that stayed. Yeah, that's really it's good. actually, it's, it's amazing. I didn't know that that originated in the mm. first couple of years of suspensions. Yeah, so we had a again, little... like, it, it really shows that mm. it everything just trickles down. And it, yeah, still that heart of suspensions. Yeah, saved. yeah, I think that's thanks to the first year as well. Did you record any music videos? Did you do any gigs that year? We did. Oh, God, can I remember them? Um, our first gig, I think this was our first one, was in Black Box, which I don't think exists anymore in Bristol. It was literally a tiny little Black Box theatre to about, I don't know, 40 or if that people. Mm -hmm. And we were so nervous. Um, we didn't have a green room, so we we're just sort of standing outside in the cold warming up, oh, um, which was fun. Uh, very different to now. <laughs> um, of course, we have our individual dressing rooms, yes. each and every member. <laughs> And uh, yeah, just in our little like suspensions t-shirts that we got a few weeks before. Um, and we did, I want to say we probably did Bastille. We definitely did Bastille. And maybe we did just be. Don't say nothing. Just be, just be. song yeah really lovely and we were so nervous we were still like deciding on some last minute like choreo things before we went on and we were like oh no like what if we're rubbish you know <laughs> how are they gonna react have they like have these has this audience seen this kind of acapella before and they were so nice to us and it all went really well i say it all went really well i'm sure there were things that went wrong like <laughs> there always are but like it felt good um so that was i think our first gig we did um, a lot of busking that year, actually, like pretty quickly, I think, for a new group um, towards the end of the year. We had a, a gig in a shopping center in Cribs Causeway, which was really fun. And we sang lots of Christmas songs. That was nice. Um, and then Raph putting together like a bunch of last minute Christmas arrangements, um, which again, we did for a concert in Will's Memorial Building. Uh, which the university asked us to do. So it was a lot of like sort of random things that people were asking us to do. Um, and it was, yeah, just kind of adapting every time being like, right, we have, you know, a stage that's a tiny square or we have like a whole, you know, disused ruined church to have a concert in. Um, although I'm skipping ahead, that was Gen 2. <laughs> um, <laughs> Don't get too ahead of yourself. Of weird things. <laughs> lots of weird Lots of random things, but they were all so much fun. As I've been sitting here thinking about it, I just think it's totally mad how much we did in that first year and how little we knew what we were doing. If I just kind of list off, we, we recorded a full album in our first year and took a show to the Fringe and competed and did like three of our own gigs with zero experience, um, all our own arrangements, having never done anything before. It's pretty mad considering. And I think we learned a lot of lessons from that first year, which we then refined and took into the following year and which I think was our probably one of our most successful years ever. So for anyone who's uh, thinking of starting something, I think just doing it and, and seeing what happens is, is probably the best advice I could give. So mm -hmm. we've been working a lot recently towards the 10 year anniversary yes. show. Can you explain to our audience what 10 year is, what mm -hmm. to expect and what's gonna happen? Yeah, it's very exciting. Very exciting. <laughs> um, so we, yes, we're having a 10 year reunion concert. It's gonna be really cool. Every single generation of all 10 years are gonna perform something, a surprise for each generation. Um, and basically for us behind the scenes, it's just gonna be a lovely weekend to like meet each other for yeah. half of us and to reunite with old friends for the other half. Um, and just have a lovely weekend back in Bristol, back in the place that we all love, I think, that we still love um, kind of reliving the glory days for some of us and kind of trying to give back to the group a little bit yeah. trying to give something back you know whether it's you know advice or support or just anything or just good feelings good vibes 
um, to try and remind the current group, you know, of all the all the love and history that's behind them. And for the audience, it's a great treat. It's going to be a kind of whirlwind tour through the history of suspensions. If you listen to the whole podcast, you'll hear all those stories and see those arrangements throughout the years and kind of you'll feel like you're one of us. <laughs> yeah, definitely. <laughs> Hopefully this will give you a bit of an insight into every generation, what we did, our favourite moments, and then just kind of what to expect. Also our personality, because mm. when we're on stage, we're performing. I think with suspensions, we're quite good at having our personality shine through. But there's so much that goes on behind the scenes that audience members and other groups don't necessarily hear. So that's yeah. kind of what this series is also about. So you can kind of get to know us a little bit more and then kind of see it all come together. Mm. Well, at Tenure, which I'm so excited for. It's going to be really, really good. good. <laughs> and so just to finish up, mm. what's your favorite song from mm. the first generation? There are lots. There are some really lovely ones. And I think, like, had you asked me this five years ago, you know, seven years ago, I'd have different answers every year because I still listen to the album <laughs> in my car over and over again. Um, and I pick a new favourite every year. But I think for this current moment, it's going to be Anaconda because kind of telling you about that again has reminded me, like, that kind of... Although we knew what our personality was, it was kind of us being like, hey, guys... We're not your average acapella group. <laughs> <laughs> we're gonna we're gonna sing Anaconda, a family friendly show. My Anaconda We did make it family friendly. I, of you know, course. we weren't rude. We're it's always fun. family friendly. We are always family friendly, but always. it kind of show people like we're cheeky, we're fun, yeah. we don't take ourselves too seriously. Um and I think, yeah, at the moment that's gonna be my favourite. Thank you so much. Thanks. And thanks so much for listening. And we'll catch you next week for episode two. Bye. Bye.